Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, we will be learning one of the concepts of C++ that's function overloading. We will be learning what are the what is function overloading, what are the advantages or you can say why exactly we need function overloading. Third, we will see how to create the function overloading and some of the simple rules we have to follow once when we are creating the function overloading. Let's start the programming. First and fundamental thing is what is function overloading. Function overloading is one of the new concepts which came up in C++. This feature was not available in C. According to function overloading, in a single program you can create multiple functions with same name. That means in my single program I can have a function called sum and I can too have another function even with the same as name as sum only. This is quite possible with the help of function overloading. Yes, it is true that we have to follow some rules and regulations but it is quite possible to create a single program having more than one functions with same name. That is the concepts of function overloading. Okay, that is we are changing, we are just putting the same name but we are assigning different logics inside the functions so we can say we have overloaded the function that's how its name comes up with function overloading now the, someone asks why we exactly need function overloading what are the advantages we are getting by function overloading or why should I do it also the strong advantage or you can say the consider is something like this if this feature is not available and consider that suppose your user or your customer needs a functionality to add two numbers then you will create a function called sum which is taking two parameters of integer type and will serve the request. Suppose the user says I need another function which does the same functionality only the changes it should take three arguments. Now as per the requirement as per the rules of C in a single program only one function can have the same name. You can't have two functions with same name. So anyhow the user have to create another functions with different name. Now as a user point of view he has to remember different names for different functionality. Yes it is true programmer can create x number of functions with different names but the user who is going to actually use these functions he has to remember all the names that means he has to remember this function is for two parameters, this function is for three parameters this function is for four parameters or suppose this function is for no parameters so it is quite difficult for the user's perspective point of view or you can say someone who is going to use your libraries so function overloading helps him a lot because here the user didn't have to remember the name he simply have to remember is that how many parameters I want to pass a function if you want to don't pass any parameters then then also the function name is same sum if you want to pass one parameter then also the function name is same if you want to pass two parameters then also the function name is same so you don't have to remember different names of the function so user simply have to remember one single function which does the same functionality but depending upon the argument you are being passed so that is one of the greatest advantage you are getting in function overloading the same feature is being continued in Java, PHP and um, another, other object oriented concepts. So you'll see the same concepts in other languages too. So we understood that, yes, user's point of view that this is the biggest advantage. You can have a single program having multiple functions even though they are sharing same name but it does different purposes, so solves different problems based on the arguments being passed. So we have understood what are the advantages we are getting. We understood somehow that in function overloading we will be having more than one functions but their names will be same but some or another way they will be different okay now let's see how exactly we have to create a functional loading let's see a simple program the program is already being created by me so I've simply created I put a header file I've added the namespace now in this program even though it is a simple program it is having two functions and the both functions name is same that is sum the first one sum is not having any argument and the second sum is having 
two arguments okay now this is the most important thing you have to understand in function loading that this functions name will be same okay the difference will be in the arguments okay so this is the most important point in function overloading so before going in deep I'll just specify the rule number one that is you can have more than two functions or more than one function having same name but there must be some changes what are the changes that is either the number of argument you are passing must be changed that is one is having two argument another is having three one is having one argument or one is not having any argument that is fine so number of argument must be changed or type of argument must be changed okay so that is one is having integer another one is having character one is having float and another one is having integer or something like that third one or else sequence of argument must be changed that means one is having integer and character another is having sir both two arguments function name is also same so how it is changed first one was integer and character second one is character integer so that is also quite possible the sequence of argument may also be changed so these are the three fundamental rules you should be knowing one important point I want to make here is that the return type has no importance in function overloading not in any subject okay so if you go for Java also the rule same is same number of arguments type of arguments or sequence of arguments these are the three fundamental rules you have to remember in function overloading so this is an ideal example I'm having two functions with same name one is sum another one is sum but the first one is having no arguments second one is having two arguments so I've used the concept the first one any one of these three rules you have to follow either you can go for type you can go for number or you can go for sequence any one as per your choice you can go for it then it is all simple I created a fun some function the one which is having no argument in that I've created two local variables I've get the value from user and I've printed the value the second one is having two arguments of integer I'm passing the value on the basis of that it does the operation here only thing is whenever I call sum it it just goes and checks is there is some function which is having no argument it finds this it calls the appropriate function when I'm calling this sum it is having two integer values it will check is there is some function which is having two integer values it finds it and appropriate function will be called you should remember you can't have two sum functions having same two integer as argument both of them then it won't work it out because the compiler will get confused which particular sum function to be called so you have to follow these three important rules any of the three should be followed to get the feature function overloading in your program you can yes you can do function overloading inside the class also in future programs I'll be showing how to do those things and once I'll explain how to do classes and objects in C++ if you have any queries you can mail to me and my email address we know the best at gmail.com you can get all these codes from my blog okay I hope so you have understood the concepts for any queries and all you can comment me on the YouTube website thank you and have a nice day